a Z2 graded structure on the restring. So we have a, a Z2 graded ring, which is a restring, and we are looking, we want to look at this family of rings, which somehow are a little bit like, you know, when you take the polynomial ring and you take the Veronese ring, you take an homogeneous component and you look at the ring that the homogeneous component generates. Okay. Yeah, a little bit the same thing. You take a two Z2 graded ring, you take one homogeneous component, and you take the k-algebra that this homogeneous component generates. So this family of rings, which in most of the cases give you coordinate rings of the embedding of the uh, blow-up of the projected space along the sub defined by high, this family of rings, they all sit inside this wrist ring in a special way. So we say they are direct summons. They are not just sub-rings. A relationship between a ring and a sub-ring can be very, I mean, uh, uh, very difficult to establish a good relationship between a ring and its sub-ring. But if the sub-ring is of this kind, it's a direct sum, the connection is, is uh, tighter. Okay, so there are more, there is more hope to relate property of one with property of the other. So now if you take, you know, broken commutative algebra, or you take uh, archive and you, you digit this ring, you see there are several hundred of papers on the rings, this rings. So you think we are in business because we, we have a lot of, inf of a lot of study investigation about this family of rings. Now we have to try to spend this knowledge to get information about this family of sub rings. And this is what we do in this paper. It's a long paper, 40 pages paper, and the main point is relate local, uh, lo compute local cohomology of this, of this ring. Related local cohomology of this ring with other pieces of information. And I tell you just what it is the result in terms of, um, in terms of the following. Maybe I use the black box over there. So if we, if we take I, which is a complete intersection of forms of degree D. Suppose we have forms of degree D. And suppose a co-dimension co-dimension say R. Okay. Of course I mentioned now. Then we look at this ring K and we adjoin to K the forms of degree D times E plus C in the eth power. And we want to know whether this is causal or not. Okay. So the outcome of our uh, paper is that uh, if C is larger than or equal to D of, this is quadratic. So if we get C larger than, than D divided by 2, no matter what E is, you get a ring which is defined by quadrix. And if you take C, which is, so, so far the co-dimension was not involved, now it comes. If take C, which is larger than D, times R minus 1 divided by R, it is Kozul. This is somehow, somehow one of our major achievements in this paper, concerning this family. You know, it's the philosophy is a little bit like what I said before. If you take large numbers, things will improve. So if I take, if I'm allowed to take C at least D half, this will be quadratic. If I am allowed to go a little bit farther on, it will even be causal. Okay, now, if you take this statement and we you apply to the, to the blackboard over here, which was exactly what we want, right? We have this idea which is a complete intersection of three quadrics, we are in three variables, you see that it doesn't give the result. Of course, I mean... <laughs> uh, so, in this 
Does, does not appear. It can be. I mean, it appears, of course, <laughs> but <laughs> of course, it appears because I mean, we we start to count from the first place where it makes sense to count. We just see how much do we have to exceed the least possible degree. So for for uh, e equal one, which is the case that we uh, we want to understand, d equal two, because we had completed the section of three quadrics, and r equal three. This result says that. So we want we want what we want the component of degree three, right? Because we said, I mean, uh, in, from this perspective, the coordinate ring of the projection is given by the degree three component of a complete intersection of three quadrics. So we want this number to be three. So we have to get this number equal to three. Since E is one, D is one, we have to take C equal one. So that we get K of I three. And then you say c equal 1 is larger than 2 divided by 2. Yes, it is quadratic then. And this number here is what? So d is 2, 3, uh, r is 3, so it's 2 third, 4 third, and 1 is not larger than 4 third. So Kozul we don't know. Because here the bounds say C must be larger than 4 third. So still, after this effort, which was not done to solve this problem, it was done independently. But when, I mean, after writing a paper, somebody uh, somehow realized that uh, we could apply these techniques to, this, to get this ring, to, get the, to have the pinched Veronese, but it, it was not saying that it was Kuzul, it was just saying it is quadratic. Okay. So, then we, at the moment, at this stage, what we can say is that the, if you take a form which is not in the third secant of the Veronese, and you project from that form the Veronese surface in P9, you get a ring which is still quadratic by that result. And we don't know whether it is causal or not. So, uh, so after Caviglia found the proof for the pinched Veronese and we decided to invest some energy into try to treat the general case, we started from this thing. Okay, we had, say, say some kind of uh, argument which was not, say, sufficient to conclude the causalness or not. And here ca came an idea which is due to, very simple idea which is due to Caviglia. He, he was the one to say, say the following. I mean, there is, okay, so there are some questions, comments? This is beautiful. This is 97 paper with, so this is 90, Seven paper in the Journal of the American American Journal of Mathematics with myself and Herzog. Trunk and Wald. And myself. Okay, so the whole paper is devoted to the to study the problem before. You take an ideal and you take to this two, two parameter uh, situation, you want to say something good about this ring for large parameters. And um, the, te the, the theory that we develop can be applied to any idea. But of course, the more you know about the idea, the more specific you can be in the result. And of course, for the complete section, we have a, a lot of information concerning the, this ring. So we can be, get good results. For instance, the complete characterization of the coimicoliness, of the arithmetical coimicoliness of this ring. So we can say it is coimicol if and only if. So the condition is complicated, but the coimicoliness is completely described at the end of the game. But the Gordon's not. Instead, I mean, indeed, we ask at the end of the paper whether this can be perhaps improved. It's just 
bound that we get. Maybe we, this, maybe it's already it's uh, it's already causal as as soon as it is as soon as it is quadratic. Right? It might be. Okay. So then, I, I was saying that if there are no other questions, I was saying that the, I mean the the the, the idea that let us start again to think about this problem and finally find a solution is uh, this idea. One way of proving that something is causal is, I mean, is the following. Suppose that you have already given one causal ring. So suppose suppose we have a ring I which is causal. And then suppose we have a quotient ring. And suppose I would like to conclude that B also is causal. What do I have to know about the relationship between A and B? There is a, a very nice argument which is, comes from an application of a, a spectral sequence, which is called the eilenberg cartan spectral sequence, which says that if you know that the regularity of B as an A module, so you resolve B over A, which can be done, of course, we know that the regularity is finite at the end because if the ring is causal, every model is a finite regularity over A. If you know that this is bound is at most one, then you can conclude B is causal. Okay, so this is somehow an outcome of this Cartan Eilenberg. Spectral sequence. Okay, so this, of course, was well known. I mean, but if you, if you, we we know that if I take a complete intersection in the polynomial ring, this is a cosu. This gives me complete intersection of quadrics. This gives me cosu uh, ring. So. The observation of Cavita is this. Suppose I, I have my A, which is the polynomial ring. And I have the ring B, which is A, modulo a complete intersection, say, of two quadrics. Now, wh what is the regularity of B as an A module? The regularity of B as an A module is 2, because it's the shift are minus 2, minus 4. So I subtract 1 in position 1, I get 1. I subtract 2 in position 2, I get from 4, I subtract 2, I get 2. So the regularity is 2. So this criterion does not even recognize that complete intersection of two quadrics is causal. So, but if I somehow do the thing one step, so I, we know by other reason this ring is causal. We know it by the Tate resolution. But this criterion does not, is not helpful here if you use it like this. But if you use it step by step, it will, it will tell you that. Now, this was the first. Uh, maybe I write over here. If we instead apply that criterion, I say, okay, I don't look right away at B. I, lay, I look first at C. C is A modulo F1. Okay, now what is the regularity? of C, now this is just one forms, the regularity is one. So this is the regularity is one. So then I can apply the cartan Heilenberg and I get a C is causal. But now I say that B is just C modulo the residual class of F2. So I'm doing step by step. 
No, modulo the first, I have regularity one, and I can conclude this ring is causal. Now the next one, I I compute the regularity over C of B. This is again a, a regular form, a non-zero divisor of degree two. So the, the, the relative regularity is still one. And then I can apply again this thing. The ring C is causal. The regularity of B over C is one. B is causal. Okay, so somehow behind this result, behind this result, they say the driving force is the Scartan Eilenberg deduction. But which is used uh, in one in one uh, single application. But this example tells you that you, if you are careful and you do step by step, maybe you can get a better, uh, better result. Like here, the Cartan Eilenberg does not recognize right away that the complete intersection is causal, but if you do step by step, it will do it. Okay, so of course, our situation it is not as easy as this one. It's much harder, but the, the starting point was don't do it, everything right away. Do it I mean, piece by piece. Okay. And uh, so far I, I have avoided all the technical details, but now it's time to maybe introduce some technical details. To, sh to uh, somehow give you an idea of what we have done. Okay, so we have, now we start with the, the ideal high, which is the ideal which comes in, okay, the one which is defined by three quadrics, which I call, say, as before, Q1, Q2, Q3. So it's complete intersection of three quadrics in, in K, X, Y, Z. Okay, so the, of course, as, as I said, the philosophy is, first of all, you have to say something about the restring. You should know something about the restring. And what do we know about the restring? The restring, it is a finitely generated K algebra whose generators are the original varieties, the original, sorry, variables, then you have to take each one of the generators and multiply them with a brand new variable. So this is the way in which you present the ring as, as a finally generated key edge. The original ring, then you adjoin one variable, which is the one which uh, allowed you to take into account the degree which comes from the filtration of the powers. Okay, so this is the ring, there is ring, I mean, uh, given in terms, explicit terms. Of course, we know that whenever we have such a ring, we can present it as a quotient of the polynomial ring. So I use x, y, z for the three original variables. Then I have to use three new variables to, let's call it t1, t2, t3. t1, t2, t3. So I, I go surjectively into the restring by sending x, y, and z to themselves. And t1, t2, t3 to it the three other generators, q1, t, q2, t, q3. And I mean, now we can take right away advantage of the fact that the three quadrics, they form a complete intersection. Under such a assumption, the kernel of this map is well understood. It's given by the, so let's call this phi. The kernel of phi is really given by this determinantal idea, the two minus of a matrix given by x, y, z, um, no, sorry. 
Um, T1, T2, T3, Q1, Q2, Q3. So this, this is the, the kernel. The three determinants, they are in the kernel by, I mean, just by substitution. So one inclusion does not depend on the fact that the three are, are complete intersection, but the equality depends on the. Let's, let's try just to, so for the fun of it, let's try Q1 times T1 uh, times, sorry, Q1 times T2, or maybe better, T1 times Q, T1 times Q2 minus T2 times Q1. Why does it, where does it go? So T1 goes to um, Q1 times T. Q2, it's a polynomial in X, Y, Z. It goes to itself. So this goes to Q2. And similarly, the other goes to Q2 times T times Q1. So they go to zero by formal reason. But the, the important thing is that now we are spending with I mean, a lot of knowledge that we, had, that we have on the restring. If we, I start from the complete intersection, this obvious relation, they generate the kernel. Okay, so we know this kernel is given by these two miles. Now, how do, how, do I, how do I pass from the restring to the ring that I like to study? The ring that I like to study is this sub-ring generated by some homogeneous component. I mean, the, the best way for doing that is introducing a functor, which is a very simple functor because it's an exact functor, a functor which selects homogeneous component how to graded object. So let's call delta delta as a functor that when you apply to a z z2 graded module it will sel select all the components which are along the diagonal. So this is a Z2 graded module, so it is something like sum M i j i j in Z squared. Now I, I say the functor, when I, I apply the functor to, to this module, just select the homogeneous components which are along the diagonal, okay? And how do, how do I define it on maps? Just restriction map. If I take a map of degree zero, if I have a map of degree zero, the restriction will give me, give me, will give me a map between the two, these two models. And uh, of course, these are these m deltas. They are modules over which ring? They are modules. Okay, they are z to z two graded modules over. Okay, now we need a name for this guy over here. I think R was not yet used, right? So let's call it R. This big polynomial ring. So suppose we start with a Z2 graded R module. And so this is M delta is an R M uh, delta is an R delta module. So I can I can I mean uh, apply this degree selection also to, to the polynomial ring. And what, what is R delta? It's something that you have seen already several times in your life. It's the coordinate ring of the, uh, the Segre product of the, of the... So, how can you assign the high gradients to the oh, yeah, This is something that I forgot to say. Okay, I want to do it in a way which is compatible with the bigrading which is given over here. So this is, this are degree one zero. So this three, these three guys, they have a degree 
1, 0. And these other three guys, they have a degree 0, 1. Okay. I mean, I, I, I want to do it in a way which is compatible with the natural grading that I have on the side. Okay. So, and this is the only the way I do it. Now when I take the, these diagonal things, this is just, I mean, the ring which is kx t1, x t2, x t3, y t1, and so on. So it's a coordinate ring of the Segre uh, product of p2 with p2. Okay. Okay, now this is a functor, it's an exact functor. If I apply it, why it is exact? Because it is um, degree selection. So homology is computed at the vector space level, right? So if I select homogeneous component out of an exact thing, it will stay exact. Because I don't change uh, nothing at the vector space level. So it's an exact functor, so it's uh, somehow armless functor. And now I want to apply this functor to If I apply this, say, I have this ring R which projects into the this ring of I and we know the kernel and then if I say R delta projects into R I delta and everything is made in a way that this diagonal uh, submodule of the this ring is exactly the ring that I want to start is k adjoint i3. Because what has the element of degree 1, 1 in this ring? I have to go the first degree component, so the initial degree is 2, I have to add 1 to the initial degree, I have degree 3. So this r delta, I mean, the only way, we, I mean, to understand this, you have to remind you how is defined. So the, the degree. Um, CE of the list ring is uh, e, I power E CD plus ED plus C. Okay, now I just want to say what is 1, 1, the degree 1, 1. I plug in 1 and 1. In this case, D is, is, is 2, 3 quad. We're talking about 3 quad. So I get this one. It's uh, the component 1, 1 is I3. And so the, the ring is generated by a tree as k vector space, as a k algebra. Okay, so we get s s s some already uh, some information because we get this short exact sequence. Kerr delta along the diagonal into R delta, which is a with very nice uh, coordinate ring of the Segre product P2 with P2. And then so we, we get this short exact sequence. Okay, so we, the kernel we know it's generated by those three determinants. Okay, so if you now, so uh, is this is this the the usual situation, if I want to understand this guy, and suppose I know a lot about this guy, and we know a lot, this, this ring is Kozul, is no matter what you ask, we know the answer for this ring. So it's, the matter is really to understand this diagonal idea. And this is a way which led to those results. If you apply it as it is, now our idea is, has been, okay, this kernel is generated by three, the terminal, say F1, F2, and F3. And if we apply delta to this guy on a single, say, action, we are, got, we are bound to get those results. So why don't we just stay, say first take, take two of them. Try to do how, how, how we did for the complete section. I take one or two, and I try first to say something uh, reasonable about this thing. Okay, and all the, uh, I mean, the business now is try to relate 
I mean, instead of applying delta right away to the three, I apply delta to first one, then two, and then three. And I mean, this was, I mean, we knew this even before starting. So all the uh, real difficult mathematics um, is, uh, is still uh, to be done. But this was somehow our starting point. And we have been able to complete this program with some uh, big efforts. And I mean, I, I, I sent to some of you the preliminary version of the paper, which is not yet on the archive. So it's still, I mean, and, um, but it works out at the end. I mean, it's, there are some, I mean, some uh, very, I mean, uh, unexpected vanishing at a certain point where you, by luck or by, you know, ability, I don't know, you discover something is zero in, in a place where you did not expect. And this was the, the, I mean, the, the way in which you, in which we, we were able to overcome the, the, the technical problems. Of course, I mean, the difficulties they are hidden at this stage. So I don't, I don't tell you what are the difficulties, I just tell you what is the strategy. And uh, as I said, it, at the end we, we can deduce that the generic projection, so if you project the Veronese surface in P9 from a form which is not in the third secant, we get a Kazur ring. Okay, and uh, you can ask, what, what about the other projection? The other projection, if you project from something which is in the, in the third secant, you have, we have finitely many orbits, so you can do it uh, by hand, so to say, all the other projections. So we have complete picture of what's happened if you project the Veronese surface from P9 to P8, uh, whether it is Kozul or not. The answer is, it is Kozul if you project from outside the third secant or if you project from a point on the variety. The other intermediate projection, they are not quadratic. They, they, they bring in some cubic equation, so there is no, not even a question. Okay, so maybe one can ask, okay, if this was projecting the Veronese surface from P9 to P8, what about the other projection of the Veronese? I think we cannot even start, so to say, because we are not in this lucky situation where the, the vector space we are looking at, it's a component of a complete intersection. This is lost. As soon as you move from those numbers, this is, you don't have it anymore. So we really miss the beginning of the story. And uh, we are working uh, with some uh, other colleagues to try to get enough uh, information to let this machine start again for, uh, to work for maybe other projection of the, of the Veronese embedding of P2 at least or maybe not, not to study the most general projection, but some, I mean, quite general projection which is special enough to allow us to understand what's going on. So these are the, the, the rough goals that we have. Okay, so this is more or less what, what I wanted to say. Maybe let me just say the last word, which is written here just to remind me how to spell it, if I find it. Okay, so I want to say come samida to everybody for attending my lectures. Thank you very much. <laughs>